Uh, my name is uh, Roberto. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I uh, like a lot, uh, like a lot uh, um, Python. And, uh, and since the two, three years ago, um, Macro Python. Can I speak loud outside here, or it's difficult to, to understand? It's nice? OK. <coughs> and uh, MacroPython, what is MacroPython? Uh, MacroPython is a port of Python 3 to microcontrollers, small, very small machines that are not computers. Um, um, for example, microcontrollers have uh, uh, frequency uh, speed of megahertz instead of gigahertz, typically. And uh, some of them, um, microcontrollers, they have... Uh, Do you uh, use one of the microphones? Okay. Okay, okay. So the microcontrollers have uh, very small memory. For example, the Arduino from uh, 2005 has uh, two uh, kilobytes of RAM memory. And, uh, but I will show uh, new microcontrollers with a lot of more memory. So it's possible, uh, in my opinion, uh, to do scientific calculations using these microcontrollers, okay? And uh, I will show the need for these scientific calculations uh, related to physical computing when you have a lot of sensors and you publish the sensor data to internet or you show and uh, locally the, the sensor data, etc. So, well, uh, MicroPython. The first, uh, I have forgotten. Um, this is the GitHub, GitHub that I have published. I have to make some uh, modifications um, from yesterday to um, this to tutorial. Do some details about the um, internet access. For example, here we have internet access from the hotel, the ATT hotel, but it needs authentication. It needs a page where you confirm. But uh, uh, the machine cannot uh, click in the page. <laughs> it's not so simple, okay? So I have modified the tutorial, and uh, I have some optional material that I will try to give you today. And the site, the site is GitHub, uh, my first letter, Roberto Colistete, okay? It's very simple to open here. Uh, R C O L I S T T. GitHub. Okay. This one. And then there is, then there is, um, this one. Okay. So you click here. You, uh, the, the main material are uh, Jupyter Notebook, but uh, it's not needed to have it installed. You can uh, navigate using GitHub preview. Okay? Everybody have seen the link? It's okay? It's a small link here, but it's GitHub with uh, this, this name. What? Somebody posted it in the Slack room. Slack. Uh, it wasn't. Somebody did. It's in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, MicroPython. So, MicroPython. Uh, this is the main MicroPython uh, site, and. Uh, it has some, uh, I, I will not use this, exactly this board, okay? But it's the main MicroPython site with a lot of documentation. Uh, for example, the original board I will show 
afterwards was this MicroPython PyBoard. It was created some years ago, a few years ago, by Damien George, a physicist who knows a lot of engineering, electronics, and programming. And, um, but this, this board doesn't have um, uh, wireless. So I use another board, okay? And uh, it's nice, uh, this site is nice that you can try examples here. But it's not uh, compatible, 100% uh, compatible with the board that I show in this tutorial. So you can try examples here, okay? And um, online resources. Uh, for example, the features of this board. Uh, it's a board from um, approximately three years ago. Um, this is a microcontroller with 32 bits, uh, more than 100 megahertz, Cortex M4, with a hard float point. Um, memory is hundreds, uh, less than 200 of uh, kilobytes. And it has some connectors, micro USB, micro SD. It has a built-in accelerometer, but it's not uh, usual to have uh, the sensors included in the boards. Uh, this is an exception. It has a real time clock, but not a battery uh, included. It has a lot of uh, uh, pins, general GPIO. They are general purpose input output, okay? And uh, uh, this 24, uh, 24 um, input output pins, they can be configured as input or output. And uh, you can control, for example, uh, 24 relays. You can turn on, turn off 24 LEDs, light, small lights. You can receive 24 uh, digital signals, okay? without problem with this small board, okay? You also have uh, three channels of analog inputs, okay, 12 bits. You have uh, two channels of uh, analog uh, output. Uh, output here is digital to analog converter. Here is analog to digital converter. Um, and all the details, but the main difference, in my opinion, about microcontrollers and the computers uh, is that they are very optimized uh, with respect to energy uh, consumption, and uh, they do a few things. They, they, they run few software, usually one software each time. There are microcontrollers with uh, threads that you can run more than one software um, at the same time, okay? So it's, but uh, uh, it's not so common. It's possible, but you not run, for example, 50 or 100 softwares at the same time, like Linux, when you see the, all the softwares, the services, keyboard, the drivers running your computer. So it doesn't happen on microcontrollers uh, road. So microcontrollers typically run very well one software or few softwares at the same time. And the other main difference is that they have a lot, a lot of interfaces. You can connect uh, dozens of devices with a microcontroller that costs uh, from two dollars, two dollar or ten, twenty dollars, depending on the device. There are ma small microcontrollers that cost less than two dollars. Okay, so um, it's a, a new road. It's not uh, uh, the programming for microcontrollers is very different uh, from programming to uh, PC computers. That uh, you have to optimize different things. Okay. And, um, well, uh, 
MicroPython is free and open source. You can, yeah, I can prove that it's. Um, for example, get. Uh, um, Okay, so the source code is available here, and uh, you can contribute as participate in, uh, in the community. Um, it, it's based on Python uh, 3.4 with some uh, features of Python 3.5, okay? And uh, there are ports to, to many, many boards that I'll show. Um, so the microcontroller, uh, microcontrollers have many outputs, inputs. Uh, since the few years, the last two years, uh, you have wireless. It's common um, for some microcontrollers, and the. Uh, the huge application of microcontrollers at, uh, nowadays are IoT, Internet of Things, because you have a very uh, inexpensive microcontrollers from $2, $10, $20, uh, very well optimized that you can connect to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, Sigfox, etc. Well, uh, the the most important feature of the tutorial is this one. Okay, 30 quits. Uh, you have, uh, there is not 30 people here. And, um, um, so I uh, will give it uh, the, 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 the 30 kits um, so that you can use it in some minutes. And the, Um, there is some, some preoccupation, some uh, caution here about the electrostatics of the human body when touching some boards. So if you, if you find some metal, metal piece in the table here, computer, it's good to touch the metal for one second with two hands, it's very fast. Uh, to, to avoid some electrostatic uh, issues, okay? Because the, 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 boards, the boards use 3.3 uh, uh, volts. Um, well. I have also with me some spare uh, USB micro USB cables. So if somebody has, uh, has, uh, has any USB cable, I can give uh, some cable to It's okay to touch the bear. I can touch it. Yeah, if you don't have a left perspective, you don't have it. Thank you. 
In some minutes, okay. So, uh, so um, we have here um, the low pi four board. Okay, this is the the bar of the the kit that the heavy. Transferred to you, and uh, there is also an expansion board to ease the, the communication, the connections. There is micro USB, micro SD, battery connector, expansion pins, etc. Okay, so to develop it's nice to have this expansion board, but for many applications, you don't need these expansion boards. Um, because they consume more uh, more power, uh, they are bigger, etc. Depending on the case, the application is just need this board. Okay. Well, the features of this board, the LoPi 4, it was released, released the last year, and it's from um, um, a company from Netherlands. Uh, it's a small company that they have in, um, been larger since the, two years, the last two years. It's PyCon. And they develop all the microcontrollers using MicroPython. Okay? And um, oh, okay. And they develop microcontrollers only using MicroPython. They help the development of MicroPython. And um, the focus of PyCon 
use MicroPython using wireless technologies. Pi 4, low Pi 4, is almost the more, uh, most complex uh, microcontroller from PyCon because it has four connections. There are another one called uh, uh, PyPy that has five connections. Uh, LTE, etc. But uh, uh, the problem is that uh, with a lot of uh, wireless connections, the power usage increases. So LoPi 4, I think it's very good because it has Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth, it has LoRa, it has Sigfox. And uh, it's a microcontroller uh, with 32 bits based on ESP, expressive, expressive uh, ESP32. And uh, it has external uh, um, additional memory. The usual memory of ESP32 microcontroller is, I think it's 520 uh, kilobytes. This one, it has four megabytes, extra megabytes. It has um, uh, extra memory, but this memory is, is a little bit slower. It's 50%, 100% is lower than the internal memory. So, but it's good for many applications. So this board, it's different from majority of the microcontrollers um, uh, until last year, because you have more than one megabyte of memory. It's usual to have microcontrollers with tens of kilobytes, okay? Um, why I have used this, this board here? What my motivation here with MicroPython in SciPy conference, Scientific Python conference? In my honest opinion, with the last generation of microcontrollers, with more memory, more speed, more features, they can very well run, uh, run uh, scientific software. And uh, I think it's very important to be here in this conference to try to, to talk to the SciPy community, um, to part of the people of the SciPy community, to try to develop for MacroPython. It's like Python 3 simplified in some features, and uh, it lacks a lot of scientific modules uh, on MacroPython. So you, you have a lot of space uh, for development, for contribution, from the community, from the SAPI community, okay? And the, with this memory, uh, large memory, uh, it's not so uh, smaller than, for example, Raspberry Pi. There was Raspberry Pi with uh, 256 56, uh, megabytes. But a lot of this memory is used by other operating system, okay? And uh, a smaller uh, Raspberry Pi he tries to do a lot of things, and uh, here you can have a microcontroller that uh, does few things, but it can uh, 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 do it better. It, um, so I think that many modules that run in Raspberry Pi in small computers, uh, single board computers, uh, you can port to MicroPython, at least for this last generation uh, boards. Oops. <coughs> well, like PyBoard, there is a lot of connections. You have um, a GPIO, you have ADC, analog to digital, analog, input output, etc. It has some simple encryption. It's good for IoT, security. Okay. The expansion board uh, has some features. It's not uh, so important. Um, we use uh, in, uh, in this tutorial this sensor BME 
208 is a sensor with three. It's in reality actually three sensors. And um, um, who has arrived late that doesn't have the kit? Four people, wait a minute. Well, uh, I will click the, the first uh, instruction. Uh, tutorial setup. The tutorial setup was given uh, some days, some weeks ago. And uh, it's about installing the software to connect the, the low pi 4. Uh, Micropacto will run on micro, uh, low pi 4. But to develop it, uh, on microcontroller, you don't have, usually you don't have uh, uh, graphical user interface like uh, normal size computers. You don't have a keyboard, usually don't have. Yes, it's possible to put small keyboards on microcontrollers, but uh, it's not common. So to develop it, it's easier to have a computer, a uh, usual computer, notebook, this desktop computer, connect with a cable or wireless, uh, to develop it, to put the software on microcontroller. Uh, but to run the software, you don't need a, a computer at all. It's optional. You can, uh, okay, you can have a computer with a microcontroller communicating, passing data, but it's uh, a specific application. But usually, a uh, microcontroller uh, runs separately uh, from a computer, okay? So you need a computer with this configuration uh, this configuration here, for example, um, it's, uh, it's these tools are redundant because why they are redundant? Uh, I could uh, choose one, two, three tools instead of uh, um, seven, six, but some tools have some dependence, some issues, some problems. Not uh, two weeks ago, but maybe this week, uh, depending on the operating system. Or Windows, Mac OS, Linux. So I have um, asked Telnet and FTP, FTP clients. Um, so you can choose to connect uh, using wireless or not. Okay? With, with Wi Fi, you can use Telnet and FTP. And um, you can also use a uh, connection with uh, uh, interactive uh, terminal using USB cable. So you use, the, for example, the soft screen on Linux, Mac OS, or put or similar on Windows. R-Shell is another tool uh, optimized for MicroPython. It's optimized for PyBoard, the first MicroPython board. And uh, um, it has nice feature of um, interactive Python, uh, and uh, also dealing with files. AMP is a simple software from Adafruit to, to manage files of, uh, for MicroPython boards. So, for example, RShell and the AMP, they are redundant. You can use one or another. But sometimes, depending on your computer configuration, operating system, one is more difficult or impossible it has some problems of dependencies, etc. So I have listed more software they needed. Okay? For example, Atom Editor with Pi make, uh, Maker plugin, Visual Studio Code. You don't need to use both, you can choose one. Okay? See so one installed, that's nice. Okay? Um, so in my experience, this installation uh, phase. It's not so simple. So I will show an um, uh, overview of MicroPython, but uh, after these this, uh, initial tests of the, the communication uh, tools, okay? So uh, everybody has at least some of these tools, these softwares installed, okay? The link is point. Uh, the link is uh, 
pointed to, to the, the structures to how to install the softwares, etc. So I will jump the, the second item. I will come back uh, afterwards to, to it. Just to try the USB cable connection, OK? Um, it's possible to have uh, small glitches. Uh, one cable don't, uh, uh, not working with a uh, uh, USB port. Uh, some details of the USB port, for example, uh, there are some notebooks that has three USB ports. Two USB ports work well with the microcontroller. Another one, not. So there are some small details that uh, you, you should try. It's not so simple. Um, you are, you are um, touching the electronics road, the microcontrollers, sensors, etc. So it's not uh, so user-friendly like computers, like notebooks, etc. Okay? And um, so I will ask you to connect the USB cable of the um, that was given or that it's uh, with you before to the um, expansion board. And the expansion board, uh, where is it? So here, this USB micro USB connector, okay? Uh, you plug the micro USB cable in this uh, connector. Uh, low pi 4 is already plugged correctly uh, over the expansion board. It, it also has a LoRa antenna. This antenna is not a Wi-Fi antenna. The Wi-Fi antenna of low pi 4 is built in. It can use the external antenna, but uh, this antenna that is uh, included in this kit is a LoRa antenna. Um, uh, LoRa uh, is long-range, low-power communication. It's different uh, from Wi-Fi. It's very slow. It's about uh, 20 tens of uh, kilobits, OK? Um, but it uh, attains ranges of uh, tens of kilomet kilometers. So it's another road. You, it's very nice to send data from sensors. Not cameras, not video, but uh, sensors that don't have uh, very fast uh, updating of data. So you can uh, send that data using LoRa and the Sigfox, OK? If you have time, you, you try LoRa uh, at the end of the tutorial. And uh, with LoRa, you can uh, use less power than Wi-Fi, obtain ranges. Um, 10, 100 uh, uh, greater than Wi-Fi, okay? Uh, depending on the condition, uh, the, the, the height, and the, the obstacles, um, um, the relief, etc. And the, um, so LoRa and Sigfox are being used a lot in I, uh, IoT, Internet of Things. To, to have many sensors distributed, for example, uh, in a large area, including regions which don't have a, a cellular uh, um, um, towers signal, né? um, like 3G, 4G, etc. So I ask you to, to connect this, this connector to the micro USB cable to your computer, OK? And uh, I 
have not asked how many uh, of you have experience with microcontrollers? Oh, okay, so one, two, three, four, okay, okay. So, half, approximately half of the people. The people don't count? No, 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 it's not. No, no, it's not. No. It's, it's too big for us. Yeah. Um, um, microcontroller and uh, who has experience with Macro Python before today? One. Okay, it's a uh, it's new. We use microcontrollers. You have said that you have experience with microcontrollers. Only one uh, knows something about Macro Python. The other people that knows my microcontrollers, you use, do you use which, which, which platform? Arduino, C++, Arduino? Arduino. Microchip? Cortex-M4, C. Directly in C, C++, okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, have you connected the, the cable? So, um, with the USB cable, you can choose any of these tools here. Screen terminal on Linux, put the terminal or similar on Windows, R-Shell on Linux, Mac OS Windows, Atom with PyMaker plugin, Visual Studio Code with PyMaker plugin. So I ask you to run one of these uh, connection tools, uh, uh, these tools, uh, Visual uh, Atom is an uh, ID, it's ID to etc. And uh, to try the connection. But uh, the help of each tool is in another page. Okay? So I will give you some minutes to have the uh, five minutes to, to, to listen from you uh, if it's the connections work or not. For example, here, um, here is the screen that, uh, but the screen running on Linux, the device, USB, the serial device has this name. With uh, Mac OS, it has a, a different name. Okay, uh, screen. Uh, this is uh, the speed. You have to lower the, the full speed because the USB serial integrated circuit is not so fast. And the present for Linux, this works. And the, here, uh, I ask you to, to look at the expansion board. There are, um, there are two types of expansion boards. There are a new one that was released the, the beginning of this year, I think and the uh, expansion board 3, version 3. So I have uh, about 12 boards here, expansion board 3. They have two buttons. So it's nice to, it's important to, to see here. These two buttons, it means that it's expansion board 3. Expansion board 2, it has only one button here, okay? below the, the PyCon name. So identify if you have a, a expansion board 2 or 3. Okay? Uh, for some operating systems like Linux, the, the device name, USB name, it changes. If it's USB um, expansion board 2 or 3. Okay, have you identified it? Two bottles, expansion board three. Two bottles here. These two bottles here. Okay? One button is expansion board two. Two. Oh no. 
uh, the first uh, uh, folder here it has instructions to set up so you can click here and see the links of configuration for each tool for example for uh, screen you can look at here this, uh, this link it has instructions it's from PyCon documentation. It has instructions for Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Okay? For example, I will connect uh, one Pi board. Yes. Uh, I have the right to have one. Also. And Um, uh, about uh, debugging uh, microcontrollers, sometimes there are uh, bugs, like the original bugs. Okay, uh, there are small animals like bugs and the other ones like fish that they can do damage on your sensor, on your microcontroller when it is, is exposed. In, in the environment, etc. So debugging uh, microcontroller software is not the only software. Sometimes there is uh, hardware debugging. When you turn, you, when you connect the cable on the expansion board with low pi 4, there is a RGB uh, LED uh, light that uh, it lights on with green light for one second or less than one second, okay? So one simple test if, uh, is if the green light uh, blinks for half second, one second, when you turn on the to to know if the, the, the board is turned on. And it blinks with a uh, blue light every two seconds, I think. Okay? So uh, before trying the logical connection, it's important to see if the energy is arriving at the board. If the USB cable works, if the USB port works, it's not so simple. I have seen some computers that uh, almost all the USB ports were not working with some microcontrollers. And they were working with all the microcontrollers. Okay? So it's not simple at all. You have to uh, verify these details. I go to the first steps. We are a little bit late. Uh, I've been. Um, people, there is Python welcome. 
Um, it will be very fast, you can navigate it uh, after the tutorial, or it's about uh, uh, MacroPython. It's a small presentation about the history of MacroPython. I have said uh, some things in the beginning of the tutorial. And um, the number of Py MacroPython boards has increased a lot after uh, two years ago. And uh, you have uh, more than 20 boards with MacroPython. About 20, I think. MacroPython and the Circuit Python from other fruits. It's a fork with some differences. And um, um, MacroPython uh, is made to operate with 10 kilobytes. I have uh, here. Um, I will not use it the tutorial. Here I have a BBC microbit with a case. It has 16 kilobytes of total <laughs> memory. In MacroPython it has 90 kilobytes of free memory. And uh, you can use MicroPython in this very small microcontroller. It's a Cortex M0. Okay. So MicroPython is very well optimized to deal with uh, a simple hardware. And the LoPi4 is a microcontroller with a lot of it, uh, memory, etc. It's not uh, the common micro microcontroller. Uh, I work in, uh, in Brazil about uh, in a project uh, called football. It's not uh, about the World Cup, okay? <laughs> it's uh, fiber and, and the telecommunications. And uh, there is uh, IoT experiments uh, where I collaborate. And um, we use MicroPython in IoT devices. And uh, there is a new MacroPython board announced to this year, it's PyBoard D. Um, it's from the Aldo, the creator of the MacroPython uh, software and hardware. Damon George has created the, the, uh, the, the first MacroPython board, the hardware, that has projected it. Um, and he has developed, uh, it was the first developer of the MacroPython uh, language. Other people, the community, afterwards has uh, helped him. And PyBoard D is a new board, and uh, it's not yet available. It will be available in some months, uh, until the end of this year, I think. PyBoard D. And it has some pictures. It's very new, the beginning of July. And um, it is smaller than PyBoard. But it has wireless, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So it's like LoPi, but without LoRa. It's like ESP32. ESP32 from Expressive is Chinese uh, a maker. Uh, it has uh, ESP32 microcontroller has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Um, so this is an option for ES ESP32. And, um, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, it has many connections. You, here you can see that. You can connect up to 59 input-output connections. With an uh, extension, there is a, a, a connector that expands the ports. Okay. And uh, uh, it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, 
and the, the power consumption is very low. So, for example, ESP8286, uh, ESP32 are not so efficient with respect to power consumption. And uh, uh, when I, I, uh, uh, I say a power, co power consumption in microcontroller world uh, in IoT, it's very important. Um, you, you measure uh, micro ampere currents. You try to save micro, micro ampere uh, range. For example, you, you read the sensor, send the da data using Wi Fi or LoRa or Bluetooth, etc., Sigfox, and while uh, uh, there is, uh, before another uh, measurement, you can enter in deep sleep mode or light sleep mode. There are many names. With microcontrollers, uh, there are uh, modes of uh, low energy modes that uh, you spend sometimes 10 micro ampere. One million ampere is a lot. I know devices uh, built in, in Brazil, Europe, United States that small batteries uh, can last for seven years, 10 years. It's the same endurance of Android smartphones, you know. It's a joke, okay. <laughs> uh, so it's a totally different road. You, 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 uh, in many projects, you have to optimize the macro Python running, okay? Uh, optimize the memory footprint. How it, uh, the power consumption depends also on the software, not only on the hardware. So there are devices that uh, um, are placed uh, far from uh, people. There is no any power energy, external energy supply. And they have small batteries that can last one year, two years, five years, up to 10 years, okay? So there are new technology with uh, new microcontrollers from last year, this year, that uh, they show that, uh, the makers uh, showed that it's possible to attain 10 years, 20 years of battery uh, endurance. Yes, it's possible. And including microcontrollers running MicroPython. Okay? So when you develop software in MicroPython for these applications, you have to take into account many things that are not used using desktop programming. Okay? So some uh, shameless marketing for the PyBoard D. PyBoard D, uh, I, I like a lot the PyBoard, PyBoard original. It, it doesn't have wireless. Uh, I'm not using it in here because I need wireless. But uh, in many features, I think it's the best MicroPython board uh, for non wireless user. And uh, with this PyBoard D, maybe you have uh, a very competitive uh, MicroPython micro with wireless connection. Um, okay, you can read the second part in detail. There is a minor. And uh, I'd like to practice the first steps. All right? So the third part is the first steps. Assuming that you have uh, a terminal connection using USB cable or telnet, uh, telnet using terminal or Atom, etc. All right? Let's try some code here. Let's try some code here. 
um, introduction to MicroPython from the PyCon documentation. Um, uh, depending on the board, the, back, the hardware, uh, the memory, the flash memory inside can be different. The organization of the files can be different. On LoPy 4, you have a flash folder. Okay? It's an internal flash memory. Uh, it's about uh, uh, 4 to 8 megabytes of flash memory. But this flash memory is not, um, uh, it, has, it hasn't a, a life for many, many recordings. You have to spare the usage of this flash memory to avoid the problems. Because uh, the MicroPython operating system, MicroPython firmware, is placed in this flash memory. Okay? And if you have some application, some software that uh, makes uh, the life endurance of this flash memory is about um, um, 10 or 100,000 writes, it's not so, so large. So you have some application that writes very fast. In some months, so less than one month or one year, the, the, the flash memory will be corrupted and the MicroPython will not work at all. You have to... to uh, it's, it's a brick, okay? So you have to, this internal uh, flash memory, you have to use knowing the limitations. It's normal for many microcontrollers. The flash memory has uh, life limitations, okay? So you have a flash folder inside. There is a libg library. Uh, for the where, when where you can put uh, uh, modules, etc. And the most important, it's almost uh, um, um, the four for MicroPyte, almost all the boards respect to that. The first file, execu uh, the execution of the first file is boot.py and then main.py. So when the MicroPython board turns on, it runs the boot.py, then main.py uh, in sequence. So boot.py, boot it's a very small file with some configuration, small configuration. Usually you don't mess with this file. You can personalize one, two lines of this file, but um, if you want to put your software to run automatically when the low-pi, the micro pattern works, uh, starts, you, you put your code on main.py. And inside main.py, it can load, import other modules, obviously. Okay? So main.py is, uh, is the main file to, to put code, obviously. Um, there are some details here. Well, these examples are very simple. I have not tried them. Okay. Uh, MicroPython is like Python 3. Yeah, very simple examples. You can try it. I will try just to show the, some details of the terminal. Okay. Why? Okay. Um, here, people, when you uh, type help in the interactive mode, you have these shortcuts. Um, most important, Ctrl C is to interrupt a running program. Ctrl D is a software reset. Ctrl E is a, enter, uh, is a paste mode, okay? Um, so for, for example, I will paste some code. To paste one line is very simple. For example,
okay, there, there is no no hidden secret. Uh, but uh, if you, I want to paste many lines, I copy, and before pasting, I enter the paste mode, Control E, okay, then paste, Control D to finish, okay. So the interactive mode is very useful to test uh, scripts with uh, few tens of lines of code. Uh, I think it's useful to test the, the, the code in Python before putting in a script. Uh, there are some differences, there are uh, specific commands on MacroPython that are not available on Python. I will deal with it in one minute. So these examples are like Python 3. There is no um, no difference, okay? Lists, dictionaries, uh, functions, etc. The um, object uh, orientation side of macro Python is simplified with respect to Python 3. Not all features of OOP uh, programming are available on macro Python because MacroPython deals with uh, low memory, it has to be optimized, etc. But it has um, methods, it has classes, etc. Well, let's type it, this example here. Um, I you need to copy each line because there is this uh, here is like Python is the prompt. Control D for a soft reset. Oh, sorry. Control D. This PyCon model, it's a model with some specific features of the PyCon boards, okay? They are not uh, available on other PyCon, PyCon uh, MacroPython boards. So there are a few, few functions. Import PyCon. Um, I can type, I can complete, okay? I type the PyCon dot. And the tab completes all the available objects. Show all available objects. I use uh, this common heart bit will disable the, the light that is flashing. So by default, the, the light on LoPi 4 is flashing. I can disable it. Okay, I'm not following. I'm not following Pepe because I have imported it after a comment. Okay, show me less. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I will make the the, 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 the light flash uh, so manually. It, it's uh, if you don't uh, do anything, it's automatically turns off. It turns on blue. You have to turn off this automatically uh, automatic mode to use a manual mode. Okay. I've changed the time here. <coughs> time is leaping. Oh, the same, okay. Um, I can 
I can use the up arrow, keyboard arrow, to obtain the last commands, OK? So the interactive mode is very practical, like IPython, almost like IPython, Python terminal. Um, here, the, co the, the color. The color is hexadecimal RGB, red, green, blue. Here is the color is green. Okay. Here the color. Sorry, is red here, and uh, I modify to be red, green, blue. The second one is green. The last one, blue. To finish, backspace. OK. So it's blinking three colors, red, green, blue, all the time. I, uh, to interrupt, I have to type Ctrl C. It's working. So this is a simple example of a, a function that is not available on Python. It's a specific function, specific module, depending on the, the, the board, the, the hardware. OK? There are other boards that has uh, that uh, some, for example, my board it has three lights, but uh, each light with a specific color. This RGB color, a uh, LED light, you can mix the, the colors to obtain any color, the basic colors, eh? you, and uh, you can mix them. All right, are you interrupted with Ctrl C? Well, if you simulate the presentation ten times, it doesn't happen. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's useful. Else. Oh, it's it's nice to show what happens when you press the reset button. It's like this, okay? Um, uh, another example, people, uh, it's to show the memory, available memory. There is this module. Every micro Python board has this module called the G GC. It's garbage collector, modely, and uh, it has some methods. One of them is collect. Collect, it optimizes the free memory. MicroPython automatically uh, free, uh, frees the, the available memory, but uh, at some schedule. And sometimes you are low on memory, you can manually uh, force him, force it, MicroPython, to optimize the memory. So there are situations, for example, when you use BBC microbit with 9 kilobytes of uh, initial free memory, OK? And you have to, to optimize almost all the time to, to use uh, modules that are not so small. And uh, so this is GC collect is very useful. So here GC collect optimizes and memory shows the available memory in bytes. It's a lot uh, uh, of bytes because it's mega megabytes. 
in kilobytes, you have almost um, 2,500 2, um, kilobytes. 2.5 megabytes, okay? Yeah, why it's, I have told before that uh, there was four megabytes of uh, free of uh, memory, raw memory. Where are the rest uh, of the memory? Uh, uh, the configuration of MicroPython, you can compile the source code of MicroPython for LowPy 4. You can define less or more memory for other features. For example, for example we have a stack, Wi-Fi stack, Bluetooth stack, Lore stack, Sigfox stack, uh, stack in the other uh, uh, memory uh, areas. So you can enlarge or reduce the, 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 the available memory for network uh, functions. Uh, this memory is available for the MicroPython user. Okay? So uh, 1.5 megabytes is used by uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, Lord and Sigfox, and the other functions, low-level functions. Um, this, um, uh, can I make a break in five minutes, yeah. three minutes, just to finish these this small examples, okay? Uh, this example, sim simple, this one. Good news, there is a math modeling. Okay? But the math modeling is uh, simplified. If you type here. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Compared to Python 3 on my machine, Uh, there are more functions. So, MicroPython is not 100% equal to Python 3. It's py based on Python 3, but uh, very optimized, and uh, some features are not uh, available, some models are not available, some models are simplified, okay, like the math modeling. Only some functions of the math modeling are available. Okay, so you have uh, scientific uh, mathematical functions uh, using the math model, there is no problem. Uh, here I show that uh, one, oh, sorry, here it's Python 3, yeah, yeah, sorry. It's the same thing, yeah, okay, the compatibility is good. Uh, which is different to see here? How many digits, digits you have here? Uh, significant digits, three, four, five, six, seven. Here you have approximately 15, 15, 16. Because the calculations in desktop Python, desktop computer, Python and desktop computer, you, usually the default is double precision, okay? The macro Python, the default precision is single precision. It gives about uh, six, seven uh, figures, digits. But there, there are some boards with, uh, for MicroPython that you have the option to have a firmware with double precision. Okay? Uh, like this one, PyBoard. 
Here is the PyBoard site, or MacroPython site, sorry. It has the firmware of MacroPython for many boards. One of them is PyBoard. And here you have a specific firmware for um, double float precision, okay? But it's not common. Only some boards have this feature. So the official boards here, a PyBoard, YPy, ESP8266, um, I have said 8666, sorry. Uh, ESP32, this ESP32 is not uh, the same with uh, PyCon, because PyCon adds uh, some features over the ESP32, like LoRa, etc. So the MacroPython for this MacroPython is a little bit different from PyCon MacroPython. Some modes, extra modes, compatibility is good. Mm, just the, the last comment before the break. Yeah, here MicroPython. Oh. oh. The machine mode has many functions uh, related to hardware of the boards. Okay, uh, one feature is the ADC, analog to digital converter. So you can read the analog signal from uh, some pins of the board. There are boards which have only one pin for analog uh, input. But there are boards with 22 analog inputs. Depending, it depends on uh, the type of the board running MicroPython, okay? So here I imported the module, I initialized the, the, the ADC, the analog to digital converter. I specify which pin of the, the board, there are many pins, I use as uh, analog input. Here I use the, the pin uh, P13. That's all. But this pin is not connected. So uh, the signal is floating. OK? Oops, sorry. Every time I read the, the analog value, it shows a different value. OK, because it's floating. It's, there is no electro connection, uh, external connection. There is no signal. So, but I can't put a uh, Output, as, uh, output from a sensor, analog output from a sensor in this input. So I can read uh, many uh, signals, uh, many types of analog signals using this feature. Um, let me see one line of code. One line of code to import the model, one line to uh, make an instance of the, the, the object, uh, initialize the ADC. Third line to define which pin will be ADC. Fourth line to read the ADC. In four lines of codes, four lines of code, uh, I read the analog uh, signal. It's very simple, okay? There is uh, other MicroPython versions that you can do it in two lines of code. But uh, some boards have only one pin, so it's automatically connected. Okay? I will stop here, uh, so we have a break until how many minutes? I don't. It's my first tutorial. Okay. 10, 15? 10 minutes? It's nice. Okay. Uh, next, next step, you, you connect a sensor. Okay? And read the sensor and make some analysis of the sensor. Okay? If possible, you have IoT in the end. So, until 30 minutes, okay? Okay? Here, I have entered a shell. 
A Shell in theory works with Linux, Mac OS e Windows and Windows. And uh, if you type help, it shows that uh, it shows some very useful comments. Some of them are to the majority of them are to deal with files, cat, cd, cp, uh, ls, ls, make g, remove it. Okay. For example, to see all the files on my pi board, I can include the the, the option here. It sees the the board like a pi board because pi. This software was made, this tool was made to the Pi board microcontroller. So it's, uh, it's not the correct name. The correct name would be low Pi 4. But it's a limitation of the software. But actually, I like it a lot. And the, it has a, another folder, which is Flash. OK, that's all. I can use a CP to copy uh, in both directions. Okay? CP, remove. Um, this command is from the the side, the, the, on my notebook, on my computer. To access the micro, microcontroller, I have to put this folder, uh, PyBoard, okay? Let's, let's start. It's, it's more than 30 minutes. Well, now we have the, um, this fourth part of the tutorial, okay? Well, uh, my motivation with MicroPython is to deal uh, mainly with IoT, Internet of Things, <coughs> with sensors. I'm a, the, I'm a physicist, okay? So I try to, to use the, the formalism of the, uh, experimental physics, uh, helping, some I, <coughs> helping some IoT products. For example, when we read the sensor, there are a lot of garbage a lot of uh, numbers, digits, that are not, they don't have meaning at all. And the majority of people that use the IoT read the data from the sensors, publishes on the internet, millions, billions of the devices, and don't criticize the data. Okay? Uh, as a physicist, uh, I like to criticize the data to calculate the mean, calculate the standard deviation, calculate the, the uncertainty, etc. Make some statistics and other analysis of the data. How many digits are useful, have any meaning when reading a sensor? It's about the responsibility of the professional that uh, makes the, the, the device. If you say that some temperature has 15 digits it's not honest. It's, <laughs> there's no meaning. Uh, to have a temperature sensor with 15 digits uh, would cost a lot. Uh, so the majority of people that publish the data without uh, taking care of the digits, of the errors, uh, are not uh, following the scientific uh, formulas. Okay, I'll measure. Sure. Um, so, um, my focus is about uh, sensors uh, using IoT and uh, to attract uh, more easily students. Uh, MicroPython is working very well instead of Arduino, instead of C++. Uh, some projects use Raspberry Pi using Python. So to move between Raspberry Pi and MicroPython is very easy. Okay? And uh, have, you, have you had the experience uh, this, this semester? in Brazil with um, a course with uh, students with no programming exp experience. No programming experience at all before. And they were making useful programming softwares, small scripts, very useful, uh, using Python or Raspberry Pi and MicroPython 
on some borders, BBC Microbit and the others. Okay? Uh, so, um, MicroPython uh, is a good choice to, to first um, for students, for any people that even in situation that they don't know a programming language, my opinion. So, what are you going to do here? Are you going to try to connect? Yeah, it's harder now. Who thinks that the USB connection is difficult? There is another step. Okay. Huh? Oh, yes. Like this cable is different. Okay. Sometimes it's the cable, the, cable, the combination of cable and the USB, USB port. With another port, the cable works itself. Okay. And, uh, well, what will you do? This is a board with a, a sensor. Sorry. Uh, a small board, I will give a small board to each one of you, and uh, four cable. You have to turn off the low pi, okay, to connect. And uh, the connection is here, uh, the details of the connection. And after connecting correctly, we try to read the sensor. This sensor is a, uh, where is, here. The board is, has one, two centimeters. Uh, the, the sensor is very small, is about uh, two millimeters, okay? This is the Bosch uh, BME 208. In reality, it's uh, actually it has three sensors: pressure, uh, pressure sensor, um, very high precision pressure high, uh, sensor with uh, 34 bits, and uh, humidity with uh, medium precision and temperature medium to low precision. So uh, it reads three different uh, data. Okay. It's a three sensor in one. Um, this sensor, um, it has a precision. It, you can program the sensor. You can program the sensor. Um, oh, here. Um, dealing with sensor is, sensors is not simple. The majority of se se uh, sensors are not simple at all. Okay? Uh, many people uh, search the internet for a tutorial, simplified tutorial, that configures the, the, the sensor, for example, with Arduino, Raspberry Pi. It accepts the default configuration of the sensor or of the driver, okay? The software that uh, communicates between the sensor and the board. Um, but uh, many sensors have many options configuration options. And th this is the difference between an uh, expensive sensor and a uh, cheap sensor. Sometimes people buy a $20 sensor, employs a, a copy the, the file to configure, to read from some blog, but the, the precision used is very low. It's the same precision of a $1 sensor. Yeah? I know a lot of people that do that. BA, this sensor, the, the driver for the sensor, the majority of the drivers of the sensor, the MicroPyte, Arduino, etc., they use a default configuration that is low precision. This sensor uh, costs, now it costs $3, about $3. Uh, one, two years ago, it was five to ten dollars, okay? 
So when it was expensive, people were reusing this sensor with low precision. But with low precision, there was sensor costing one, two dollars. Okay? And uh, um, the Bosch has good documentation, taking out technical data. You can see the, the some data of the sensor. Uh, this sensor is very nice. This sensor can have dozens of applications. Okay? Um, for example, you here you can you can see the precision, the accuracy of the sensor, the noise, the sensitivity, etc. Yeah, I increase the, the font, font size. It's true. This sensor has a noise of 0, uh, zero dot 0.2 Pascal, the unit of pressure, OK? And uh, it corresponds to approximately uh, 1.7 centimeter. It's the minimal noise. The actual noise is a little bit higher. It's some centimeters, OK? With these sensors, I have already tried it with some projects, students' projects, that this sensor can detect when you are uh, stepping, stepping up and down, uh, 20 centimeters, etc. You put the sensor here, or here, or um, 40 centimeters high, and uh, it detects the difference of pressure. What is pressure? I'm a physicist. Okay? The pressure, atmospheric pressure, is um, a gravity over the air that, that uh, uh, you have a mass of air over the sensor. So if you are over a um, low altitude, there is more air over you. The pressure is greater. If you are at uh, 3,000 meters, you have a low pressure, OK? But the pressure, atmospheric pressure, depends on the atmospheric conditions also. So you have to, you can calculate the, the, the altitude uh, if you know the, the atmospheric pressure at the sea level, OK? And you know the atmospheric conditions. So you can measure the altitude here with uh, centimeters precision. Not exactly two centimeters, five, ten centimeters precision. This sensor is being used a lot by drones. Okay? So uh, drones have G, uh, GPS, but the GPS is not accurate at the height. And uh, when the wind uh, blows uh, and the, the drones is, uh, take a film of a marriage, and it, it's moving, it's not, it's not good. So they have a sensor like this. They have a software that compensates with the motors to uh, maintain the same altitude with a precision of centimeters. So uh, this, so this, uh, this sensor is, uh, has become very popular. One of the reasons is uh, because of the drones. There are many, uh, millions of drones. Yeah, not, not here at the moment. Uh, então, this sensor is very precise for uh, atmospheric pressure. And the humidity and temperature is reasonable. Okay? And, the, for example, the documentation, you have a data sheet. Data sheet is small, right? No. Flyer is small. It's a marketing. A uh, data sheet has this, of this sensor, well, 54 pages. So to use the sensor, it's suggested to read uh, at least um, one third of the data sheet. Every <laughs> sensor has a data sheet, a manual. A uh, uh, good documentation, uh, a good maker of the sensor has good documentation. It's important. And the majority of people use the sensors without criticizing, uh, without knowing the configuration, the possibilities of configuration. For example, here you study the sensor, OK? Ah, uh, look at here, the, the power usage. 
micro ampere. Okay? Depending on the mode, the, you have a fraction of micro ampere in slip mode. Okay? Um, I, there, there, are, there are many details, electrical configurations, logical configurations. I will pass. How the error changes with temperature? All the silicon sensors are temperature sensors. <laughs> All the silicon sensors and devices are dependent on temperature. Uh, Here, for example, you can configure some parameters uh, to define the precision of the, the, the output data of the sensor. Okay? Uh, here are some configurations recommended by Bosch. Oh, gaming. Okay? For, ah, th this, this sensor can, can, can be used for many applications, one of them, it can be used in a fast, very fast mode, high frequency mode. The, the sensor can detect one, when one people um, opens and closes the door. Depend on the size or the volume of the room. Because when you open the door, the, there is a movement of the air, okay? And the, there is a, a pressure wave that can be detected by the sensor, depend on the size of the room, and how fast or slow you open and close the door. Yeah, it's possible. It can detect the difference between uh, opening and uh, closing the door, depending on the conditions. Okay? So you can have many applications that are not just measuring the atmospheric pressure. Okay? So here, you have some parameters, the root mean square noise, depending on this parameter. Is the oversampling, uh, you can have an oversampling with five possible values, and the, the, the noise uh, decreases with this higher oversampling. Oversampling take many measurements in making, you calculate the, the mean, okay? Uh, inside the, the Integrated circuit, it does this calculation. Uh, another configuration, but for the pressure of temperature. So here, uh, there are uh, many people who are using this sensor with these configurations when it was very expensive, okay? This was, is, is yet the, the default configuration for many drivers, for Raspberry Pi, Arduino, MicroPython. They use this default configuration that uh, has, hasn't uh, good precision, but this sensor is capable of a, a very high precision, very low noise. But the majority of people doesn't know that. Doesn't, uh, is, doesn't um, take the time to read the documentation. Even the drivers, the uh, driver developer doesn't read, sometimes doesn't read all the details of the sensor, okay? So I think it's a lack of scientific formalism applied to IoT, applied to microcontrollers. So you are at SciPy, scientific Python, where scientific uh, formalism, scientific um, methods are needed to deal with data, uh, responsible data, responsible, responsible, uh, responsible um, um, results. So I think that even very small sensors you should take, should um, take seriously uh, the details, the precision, etc. Okay. 
a lot of sampling of the temperature, or the temperature uh, noise decreases with oversampling. So we have about four parameters in this uh, driver, the driver for the sensor that can change the behavior of the sensor. There are more parameters, but four are the main ones. Um, Okay. Um, well, everybody has the mini uh, the sensor. Uh, remove the USB cable from the expansion board, so it's turned off. Okay, you need to connect the four cables. Oh, one question. Uh, how many people here will connect wires electronics for the first time? <laughs> The I don't have the same colors uh, of cables, wires uh, for everybody, so the colors are different. So I not follow colors. Uh, Sorry. And uh, you have to connect with the pi board to turn off, expansion board to turn off, four wires. The I2C bus, uh, it's a serial bus up to 400 megahertz. Um, it's a bus that uses four wires. The first one uses four wires, uh, two wires for supply, positive uh, voltage. Ground, zero voltage, and two wires for data. A clock data and the clock signal and the data signal. Okay? So, what is the right connection? To see the, the pins, the numbers, the, the small letters, okay? In the, um, the, the sensor, sensor board. Well, oh, if it's difficult to, to, to see the small letters, I have a very cheap lens here. <laughs> okay. I use it. I also use it. I have two, okay? If somebody needs it, I can feel free to, to use it. Um, so you, you need to connect the four wires of the BME 208 sensor to four wires of the expansion board. Two wires are very simple. These ones. Um, there is a problem with uh, the number of the uh, different number for expansion board. The logic is very simple. We need to connect the the ground G and D of the sensor board to, to the G and D, the second pin, here is the USB connector, okay? The, the light, the low pi for light is here, aligned with the USB connector. So, the first pin is not used, the second pin is the ground, 
Okay? The third thing is the uh, positive voltage, VCC. So you connect the ground of the expansion board to the ground of the small board, small sensor. VCC of the sensor with the 3.3 volts. volts. 3V3. Yeah, it's, it's a notation for 3.3 voltage. Okay? These two connections are simpler. And the, the other two are the are on other side. Uh, this pin, the not this, not this, the third, the fourth, counting from below. Okay? And the, the number, depending on the, 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 the picture, the, the, the number is different, but it's the third and fourth. The third should be connected, but there is S, uh, there is, sorry, there is SDA, SDA should be the the fourth pin from below, SDA here, and the, the SCL should be the third pin from below. Yeah. So to copy the file, you choose your uh, preferred tool. FTP, RCL with USB cable, MPI, uh, Atom, Visual Studio. Visual Code Studio. Where is? Yeah, Visual Studio Code, Atom Editor, MPI, RCL, FTP. Five tools to copy files are available. Some of them work better on some operating system, it depends. Okay? Uh, copy this file here. Uh, the source code of the, the driver, I'm equal to of this driver because we have modified, have improved the, the driver because other drivers were not using the configuration options of the sensor. So they were using low precision uh, measurement, medium precision. So we have uh, a more um, configurable uh, driver. So you have, for example, here, you have five parameters to initialize to make to do the initialization of the, the sensor. Okay? Here is the source code of the driver. So we have to download the file and put the file on PyBoard on flash uh, library folder. Okay? And then you can try to test the driver. I work with some IT projects, and the student uh, who I collaborate has placed the um, a low pi, low pi four, with many sensors. Uh, I think we eight nine sensors, uh, four sensors submerged, sub and uh, a fish uh, took a. Uh, uh, 
has a dimension the, 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 the sensor, one of the four sensors. So uh, some other uh, birds that uh, damage the sensor, etc. People that uh, uh, steal the sensor. So you place it outside, but there is these problems. Mm. And to make it, it, one thing, one difficult is to make it work uh, on the table in conditions that you can control. But uh, in imagine doing a board with soft hardware, hard, uh, to stay during one year, two years, taking rain, wind, dust, etc. So it must be very robust. Yeah. It's not only the cable, the tail, the wire. What motivation to uh, make you manage it with sensor? To show that the real data from real sensors are not ideal. The readings change a little bit or even a lot. And to deal with these variations, you have to use scientific tools, numerical tools, like statistic tools, mean, variance, standard deviation, okay, uh, FFT, fast Fourier transformer, uh, and many other tools that you are uh, used to uh, Python for desktop computers. So there is a need for macro Python scientific tools, okay? And there is the, the, uh, a term, the, the, um, edge computing, that uh, IoT Cloud, IoT Cloud are tools on internet made for machines. It's like uh, Google Drive, Google Docs, but not for human, humans. It's for small devices, send the data, the data is saved there, and the humans can read the data sent by the, the small machines like this. Okay? So, uh, billions of IoT devices uh, can send data to IoT Cloud. There are hundreds of IoT Cloud sites, free or partially paid or commercial. And the edge computing, what's about edge computing? Is that making, at minimum, a pre-processing of sensor data at low level, near the sensor. So the communication is smaller. The packet is smaller. It's faster. Okay? So there is a need to process the data, the sensor data. Um, my motivation here is that uh, uh, maybe next year there will be more people, for example, it will be nicer to have uh, four people present in this, this tutorial, not only me, to help, better help uh, making the configuration, etc. Okay? So I'm trying to, to show to SciPy com, uh, community and also to MicroPython community that there is a case for scientific MicroPython targeting billions of devices. For example, IoT devices. And many tools that you, you we see in, at SciPy Moduli, NumPy Moduli, and Submoduli can be ported. It's not 100% uh, uh, port. Uh, it's, uh, you, you have to rewrite to deal with low memory, etc. But I think it's good to, to um, both sides. For example, when you deal with, deal with Python, uh, saving raw memory, uh, you can use this technique to improve the memory efficiency of your 
desktop computer, uh, Python for desktop computer. I, uh, I think that majority of people develop Python software without measuring the home memory usage because you have gigabytes of memory. Okay? So majority of people doesn't profile the uh, memory usage in Python. But in MicroPython, it's very needed. It's important. For example, I try to develop scientific packages for BBC microbit with 90 kilobytes of free memory. Some scientific models are possible, other not. And the BBC microbit is used by more than one million children at the United Kingdom. Children from 11 to 12 years old. Okay? Well, um, does anybody have a success to read the, the, um, the sensor? The li this line from machine import I2C, import the driver, initialize the I2C uh, bus, I2C scan show all the devices connected to the I2C bus. This BME 280 has a default, it can be changed depending on the board, it has a default I2C address. It could be, instead of one device, you could have tens of devices connected to your I2C bus, okay? And so here is a confirmation that the device is connected. It's not needed, this I2C scan function. Here is the initialization of the sensor using the four parameters. After initialization, the, the instance has many methods, okay? You have uh, pressure, temperature, forma formatted values, for example, values without uh, the, the um, uh, unit, etc. Sorry, can you, what does I2C mean? Huh? I2C, what does that mean? Inter inter integrated circuit communication. Uh, okay, support. thank you. Oh, that's the I2, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's to connect uh, serial devices using few wires. Okay. And uh, that is also SPI. SPI has more wires, but it's faster. It's so different protocols to do this. Yeah. Idea. SPI, it uh, so attains, uh, it's simpler. <laughs> Economy, okay. SPI, it attains, uh, I think it's 40, 40 million, 40 megahertz. Uh, each I2C is slower. It's 400,000, uh, 400 kilohertz, okay? For example, to connect a uh, screen uh, display, I2C is limited to low resolution displays, okay? Uh, have you succeeded? Does anybody have succeeded? Has anybody succeeded to read the sensor data? Yes. The problem is to put the file. Uh, I think there is a little curve to um, deal with the tools between the computer and the MicroPython. Once the tools are managed, you, you have a good configuration with your shell, with Atom, with Visual. Visual Code Studio, etc. It, it is very easy to, to, to practice MicroPython, to use MicroPython. The problem is the, the beginning, to, to the dependencies on your computer for the tools, etc. Yeah? Can, can you help me out? Um, uh, insert a pause, uh, time is slip here, but uh, to, to make it slower. And it you print the humidity, and you can see the variation of humidity following the conditions. I went from like 50 to 80. 50? It was at like 53, and it went up to 80. 80? Yeah, so oh, it like there are some people that they obtain 90, 95. How many did I get to 80? I got to 93. It's not only a joke. Uh, uh, at the United Kingdom, uh, uh, the children 
has competitions for Raspberry Pi being used in the International Space Station. Uh, one of them selected between the six, uh, six uh, groups of children and uh, teachers. Every one had been selected because it uh, devised a sensor. It used an uh, immediate sensor to detect when the astronaut is inside a room in the International Space Station. Because when you are, you are in the, inside a room, not very large, your respiration, your breath, changes the humidity of all the environment. You can detect when, if there, are, there is some people there after some minutes. OK? So uh, one sensor can have tens or even more than 100 applications. It depends on the creativity of the people, OK? So you can master uh, usage of one sensor and have many applications. It's very nice. OK, the challenge, I participate. Yeah, yeah. Not 90. Ah. <laughs> Look at here. You see that there is a, it is slow to change, to, to decrease. OK? These sensors are not so fast. But even in steady conditions, there are many uh, digits that are changing. So we need to make numerical processing, statistics processing, uh, maybe a uh, fast Fourier transformer, etc. Many of these tools are not uh, available. Uh, for example, here, I have made a very simple software, uh, didactical one, to calculate mean, variance, and uh, standard deviation. It's not optimized, OK? You can write in less lines of code. And uh, applying the software, the simple function, it takes re uh, 100 re readings, calculate the mean, uh, variance, standard deviation. So you have here um, the pr atmospheric pressure mean. And the standard deviation is small. But I can change the BME uh, 280 initialization parameters. There are five parameters that uh, can change the precision, the, the error deviation, the error of the, uh, the readings. I think there are three parameters that, uh, that changes the pressure readings uh, error, OK? So I could modify the code using non the four, non the four uh, parameters, uh, configuration parameters here. Here, I have used the default ones. Uh, I can look at the source code. It's more or less documented. And uh, with different configurations, the standard deviation will be, would, would be greater or uh, uh, smaller. OK? So for example, there is not yet a good uh, statistical model for MacroPython. And you can make the difference contributing, contributing to MacroPython. So if you are a NumPy uh, developer, if you, are, if you are a SciPy developer, a Pandas developer, why not make a micro NumPy, a small set of NumPy to MacroPython? OK? The advantage, it's a new road, billions of uh, possible devices, OK? And uh, it's, I think, it, I like a lot to develop to program softwares with optimization. I start programming uh, with uh, 16 kilobyte uh, computers, 16 kilobytes of run 
uh, eight bit, eight bits uh, computers. Um, Z8, and it was uh, very important to optimize almost everything. So with microcontrollers, it's nice to practice these optimizations. Oh, one of the optimization very important is time optimization. For example, one moment. Um, the time you need to read the driver, sometimes is very important. I have seen applications that uh, you have to do the, the following. You have, uh, for example, a low pi, low pi 4, connect to 10 devices. It is, it is sleeping during uh, uh, five minutes. It wakes, it wakes up uh, to read the sensors, but before that it needs to load the modules. Because it's a very deep sleep mode, it, ha it is almost a reboot. So it has to reload the, the modules, the Python modules. And sometimes the Python modules uh, importing, there is sometimes 10, uh, 15 modules to, to, to import. It takes one second to two seconds. And you need to minimize the awake time. Okay? Because when the microcontroller is awake, the current usage is high. The low pi is about 40, 50 million pair. When it is, when it, it is in deep sleep, it's about tens of micro ampere. So you try to make the optimization to, be, to the microcontroller be awake in the uh, minimum time. So the import of modules Important modules should be minimized, minimized in time. So you have to optimize your modules. Not only for speed, uh, memory usage, but also for speed during importing. Okay? So there are many optimizations needed in the mic microcontroller world. It's totally different from, from um, uh, PC computers. Okay? Yep. Um, one thing that is possible with Python is metaprogramming, right. softwares creating softwares, okay, or mod modifying softwares. Yeah. And uh, with MicroPython, it's also possible. Okay. Cool. It's very interesting in the IoT world to have uh, instead of firmware update, instead of installing all the operating system, the firmware of the microcontroller, you can have a very slow connection using IoT, okay, Laura, for example, and you can update your file, your software, and create a new .py file, and replace the old one. With Python, it's possible to do that. With Arduino, it's not possible, okay? So, for example, there are many companies, comp companies that have hundreds of uh, boards like this, there are nodes, low-pi 4, low-pi, etc. In small boxes, collecting sensor data with uh, solar energy or battery that uh, lasts for one year, five years, etc. Okay? Um, and it costs a lot to go there and update locally the, the, the software. Because if they find a bug, how to update the software uh, if the, the boxes are uh, spread in uh, many kilometers, okay? So you can use the low, com uh, low, uh, low speed communication, LoRa, etc., to send small scripts of Python updating your software. And uh, this, this feature of the Micro Python, I think it's uh, very interesting, very competitive compared to C++, compared to Arduino, etc. Okay? And this is already being used. There are some products using MicroPython, personalized, modified MicroPython, tailored to some application. There are companies, comp companies uh, using these um, 
uh, self-updating software, but uh, optimized to update only parts of the code. Okay. And uh, well, um, my time planning of this tutorial was very different. I have uh, two another features optional here that uh, we don't have time. W one was the challenge to use. Uh, uh, the documentation of SciPy here to set, to configure a small web server. So it's not difficult to configure a web server, for example. You can create a web server, HTML server, running on Mobile 4, running on MicroPython, and uh, it can show uh, the sensor data information. Oh, sorry. Where is? So, like Python, we have sockets. Okay. And uh, there are some examples to publish, uh, to create. Uh, a very small, uh, static, almost static web page showing sense of data. This uh, would be the next, next part of this tutorial, but we don't have time, it would be uh, 30, 40 minutes. It will be IoT, IoT uh, so that uh, um, with a smartphone, you can open, you can connect to the access point, of the OPI and uh, open the web, uh, web browser, point to some web page, okay, the default web page, and it shows graphically the, the data, okay. And uh, I can show, I could show some material. Uh, web pages, even in microcontroller, can have graphics, plots, tables. They are not exactly simple, it depends on the available memory. Okay, so you can, um, so uh, web server, local web server is one possibility. Another possibility is very simple, easy, uh, using IoT Cloud, but it depends on internet available here. There is internet here from the hotel, ATT Center, but uh, this internet needs a welcome page. You have to click, your pie can't click yet. Maybe you can make a, a version of the OPI that uh, you fake clicking on the button of the ATT web page. And uh, if you have a Wi Fi connection to internet, you can uh, spend, you can write in 15, 20 lines of code, uh, this, the read the sensor and send the data to, to IoT Cloud. Okay? And there is LoRa. It was my uh, one of, of, the, of the targets to show a very small script to run LoRa. LoRa is very interesting. interesting. It's low power communication, long range. Uh, I have a software here to, to have a LoRa uh, non-gateway, okay, that receives packets, and I would use it every LoPi from you sending the sensor data to one receiver, okay? This room is a small distance, but it could be kilometers away. And uh, a very low energy consumption, okay? LoRa is totally different from uh, Wi-Fi. LoRa doesn't need uh, subscription. Sigfox is good, uh, it's almost the same thing like LoRa, but it has, but it needs a subscription, okay? So you can create your own LoRa, LoRa1 network. You have the, the, the possibility to do this. You can create your LoRa network, okay? And the, so this LoPi 4, it's a good example of an IoT device. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, Sigfox, and uh, 
Where is... No? Well, and uh, uh, for everybody that it, 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 uh, who is interested about the subject, uh, two things. There will be a sprint. This one is the sprint of the last year. The first time that micro, MicroPyte was shown here. Uh, this time I have um, with me more different devices. I have more there. I have, for example, BBC Microbit, Pi board with a nice case, other boards, other sensors. For example, I have a nano spectrometer sensor. It's a small square in the middle of this board that uh, reads uh, six channels of uh, uh, visible light. It's the first nanospectrometer uh, from the road. This was released, uh, announced the beginning of the last year and started the selling October uh, last year. Mm -hmm. You have a nanospectrometer. It can detect colors with precision. And it's compatible with MicroPyte, SBAN Pi, etc. And uh, instead of uh, spectrometers costing hundreds of dollars, uh, you can spend uh, $25, etc. That's, there are hundreds, hundreds of uh, applications of spectrometers in biology, physics, uh, chemistry, everything, okay? astronomy, etc. You can do data processing of a spectrometer using what? Microcontroller. So it needs the software. Data processing of spectra data is not so simple. And it lacks the software. So uh, this tutorial was, is also an invitation to anybody from Sapphire to start thinking about contributing to the MicroPython community. So the two communities, SciPy and the MicroPython, uh, can be uh, can work together. Uh, okay? And the, the sprint will be Saturday uh, Sunday. I'll be there with uh, many more uh, sensors and devices. Okay? And the, it's a challenge to develop uh, to bring C microbit, develop a uh, scientific model within uh, 90 kilobytes of memory, okay? And uh, another thing that I can offer, I know that it is, uh, no, uh, not everybody will be uh, there the, during the sprint. Um, if somebody wants to have uh, some of these devices to work, to develop, uh, talk with me, I can leave you one. Uh, of them during, uh, during some days this week, okay? We can talk about uh, which places of the scientific tools are lacking on MacroPython, okay? And uh, statistics, narrow networks. Uh, for example, I, I have one, yeah. This is a microcontroller OpenMV. It's in the second part of the, uh, the tutorial with the links of uh, different boards. It has a camera. Okay? It's a microcontroller with uh, about 100 kilobytes of memory, free memory, running on the MicroPython. MicroPython is already started. OpenMV uh, uh, M7, I think. It's made in the United States. And, uh, it was released the last month or two months ago, a software, a new firmware compatible with a software for deep learning for this microcontroller. To recognize images, but you do the training on a PC computer. And you create a file that is sent to this microcontroller board. Okay, and then you have deep learning running, the result of deep learning running on this microcontroller board. Yes, it's happening. It's very new. It's about uh, some weeks, last month, or I think it's last June. Okay, so machine learning, deep learning, 
I'm starting to happen on microcontroller go. There is a there are a very large number of possibilities. Okay. Um, and the, if you want to develop, I have one of them here during the, the same time. I have, uh, I think, uh, six types of MicroPython boxes with me during this week. Okay? And um, so I hope that uh, uh, next year, with or without me, there will be. Uh, other uh, MicroPython activity, tutorial, presentation, etc. with more people uh, from the MicroPython and SciPython community participating. Uh, it's not uh, so simple to be alone here and to prepare all the hardware to, to put the MAC address <laughs> on the bottom of this expansion board that took you some hours. Okay, it's not so simple. It's nice to, to share the, the work with the others. Okay? And, uh, so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the site organization. Thank you very much for the PyCon. Uh, for some of the material was uh, from PyCon that we we'll come back to go back to them. And uh, thank you very much for everybody here. I, I like a lot to the SciPy environment. It's a friendly uh, environment. And, uh, sorry for my part with the little bit snaps, my specifator. And the good news there are my students, not sure I have them on a first basis, who is faster in the Okay, thank you so much.